Hello everyone, my name is Samantha and this is episode one of Noodles and Knits. Um, so a little bit about me, I have been knitting for exactly one year. I started in September 2022 and I figured let's do a podcast. So um, we'll start with some finished objects, um, keeping it about stuff I finished in like the last month-ish. Um, so, first thing, there, there's, you know, ends to be woven in, but these are a pair of socks. Yeah. Um, so, I can pull up my notes because I should have already done that, but these are the Okanagan. Okanagan. Um, These are the Okanagan socks by Andrea Rangel. Rangel? Um, so these are a gift knit. So I've made these not for myself because these are a little, a little bit big for me. Um, but these are for my father. Uh, so nice blue, orange, and white, which are his college school colors. So. He should like that, but um, really like these. Uh, a little bit about it, um, obviously one by one rib, and then this little bit is three by one ribbing. Um, and I did, it has optional calf shaping, which I did do. Um, so for the calf shaping, it just kind of has a nice little center line kind of, and it decreases around that. Um, so it kind of starts a little thicker at the top and then gets down to um, the 72 stitches I think I did. Um, 72 stitches for this. Um, really like how clean the lines are on this. Like it looks super crisp. Very happy with how that turned out. Um, it has just a standard heel flap and gusset slip stitch. Nothing fancy there. Um, it does have a little bit of uh, arch arch shaping um, so just to help kind of pull it a little snug there and then it also has a slip stitch toe which is the first time I have done this it was kind of a pain in the ass but should help make that a little bit more sturdy um, so I think the pattern was like kind of designed for like hiking socks um, so it's meant to be pretty rough and tumble which should work out for my dad. I don't know if they could wear them hiking, but um, they should hopefully hold up to whatever he wants to do with these. Um, so these are the Okanagan socks. Um, again, super happy with how these turned out. Like I will probably want to make myself a pair at some point because so nice. Really, really fun to make. Like there was enough interest where it's just like, even though this is a long ass, uh, like it's like there were decreases enough that it's like all right let me get to this section like the striping helped like it was definitely by the time I finished one section there was something else to do so it was just super interesting like I was able to keep going I want to get to the next section want to get to the next section sometimes especially with the, the foot when I'm trying to like go down it's just like I kind of get bored and it's just like more stacking it like tiny little needles it's like mm. but uh, this kind of helped keep me going so very happy with that Next project that I finished, not as happy with, um, and I'll, I'll explain that, but this is the camisole number nine. Um, it's a little wrinkly looking, but and I'll explain what that is here in a second. So camisole number nine by my favorite things, knitwear. Um, I did not use um, the recommended yarn for this. Um, I used, I realized, hold on. Yarn on this, the blue and the white are West Yorkshire spinners. Um, the white is milk bottle. The blue is cobalt. Uh, this orange is uh, Sandus Garn um, Sisu. Uh, I think the colorway is like 3065. Let me check on that. No, sorry, 3326 orange. 
Um, so they do numbers, but 3326 for the uh, Sandiskarn Sisu. But I digress. So this, like I said, is made in Holstgarn Coast. Uh, the colorway is uh, skylight, that light blue, and then this more bluey blue is J. Um, so, as I said, not the recommended yarn. I did swatch. Um, there was a swatch somewhere, and I knew that I wasn't going to meet gauge. So I did attempt to adjust for that. But, so I did, I cast on more stitches at the underarm. Um, I realized kind of later in that I probably should have cast on a few extra stitches um, for some of the neckline stuff so it wasn't quite as tight in. Um, the biggest problem I had with this is I did not account for my row gauge being off and it was not like a little bit off it was like six seven eight like it was I had much a lot more rows per, per inch than what the the gauge was supposed to have. So what ended up happening is the sleeves Right, so you kind of cast on, you do front, front, back, back, connect, connect. Now you got a little foom, foom, top to work down in the round. Um, so I did all that. I kind of was actually patterning on this and I'm like, okay, that should be roughly long enough-ish when I kind of compared. Um, but it, it, it was not. So as you can tell, like this is about as high as I kind of like my arm holes to be, like essentially TMI. Like if, if the top of the armband is like where there's like hair growing, that's too fucking high for me. Like it's, it's all up in my armpits. Do not like that sensation. Um, so I like a little bit of a deeper um, arm hole, arm scythe. I think that arm scythe. Um, so this ended up being with this the um it's it's really quite nice like the detailing on this um where i can see why people struggle with this uh like the little yeah there we go the the nice little um like knit stitch looking thing there um it doesn't have a lot of elasticity um and so by doing this it kind of pulls it in a little bit tighter so just to here which is what i was like looking at was originally like it was a fine but then I added length and then that kind of pulled things in a little bit tighter so it ended up being kind of snug um so I if my editing skills allow I will try and show like a video of me wearing it or insert a picture um so I wasn't happy with the fit of it and that was more kind of on my end like I didn't account for the fact that I needed to make the straps longer and by the time I realized that like I couldn't really go back and fix it because this I had already done and it's not like I can like you know say like I've never done this but like I know you can like cut into knitting and add some more like how, how am I gonna do that with all all that like that's a separate piece so it just I wasn't able to really um do anything about that. So then I decided let's let's do some experimenting. Now you might notice like this is really really small, right? Like if I were to put this on now the edge is like at the top of my armpit. So I was like let's do some experimenting. Let's see what happens with this yarn if I throw it in the washing machine. If I dry it, unsurprisingly, yeah, it, it shrank even further. Um, but like the stitches still look nice and crisp. Like it's not like it's um felting or anything and I think because this is um cotton and wool like I don't know that it will like felt felt but um I was like I'm not gonna wear this like already it's like I'm not gonna undo it and redo it because this striping was a pain in the ass uh, this yarn in general is not fun to kind of rip out because it gets a little snaggy so it's like let's just let's just do that so now I know if I <laughs> definitely definitely unless I need to make things smaller do not uh probably more the drying in the washer don't do that. Um, but that being said, I do like the pattern. Um, if I were to use this yarn again, like I already know, like I need to add length to the straps and probably still add like um, at the neckline, cast on a few extra stitches um, just because it ended up a little kind of, not necessarily like a little narrow kind of visually. So it needed to be a little bit wider. Um, so I have ideas. On, on what I would do if I were to make this again in a different yarn. And I do think I will make this pattern name because it is super 
nice. Like I like, I like it. I like how it visually looks. It's like simple, but it's super crisp, super clean. Um, I didn't show you the bottom edging. Um, I chose to kind of finish with um, the stripes instead of doing like a block of color like I did up at the top, just because I thought that would make it look with the length a little weird. Like if I were going to crop it a whole bunch, I might have done solid blue, but since I wanted to kind of just blend in, I kept with the stripe motif except where I folded it down. So you get to a point, you knit a little further, and then you pick up stitches and you sew down the edge. So it's a little bit heavier, helps um, keep it down. And it, it is, like I said, just a super nice, clean finish on that. Um, so yes, overall, not, not a successful uh, and finished object, like it, it didn't fit well, but um, I, I learned some things. Row gauge is important which on that note, um, that, that, that's kind of it for my, my finished objects. Um, I have another uh, work in progress that I am, we'll see how it ends up um, because it also has issues with row gauge that I did not properly account for. So I am making the April cardigan by Petite Knits. And again, I'm using Holscar and Coast, this time held double. Um, and I am doing a marl fade thing with it. Um, so originally I got some, the, the reason I have some of this uh, Holstgarn Coast was to make a, I believe it was the Eve tank top. Um, and it was like a stripey pattern and I wasn't liking the stripes colors, the colors I got for the stripes. So I ordered like a selection of coasts. So just like one of the random like grab bag mystery packs. So I, I got two of those, which each of those bags is about 200 grams of yarn. Um, and so I, I got a bunch of that and I didn't necessarily end up liking a lot of those colors uh, for what I wanted either. So I was like, okay, well, what can I do with this? So um, I swatched and this, this was a swatch I made, which I like. I actually like these two colors together. I might do something with that. But I swatched, um, I measured the, the gauge, and I was like, okay, so I think if I'm within like a stitch or two, I can um, do, like, I had a gauge for it. So I was like, okay, look, the April cardigan. Like, I want to make a cardigan. I haven't actually made a cardigan yet. Um, so I did that, and as I was going through the, um, like, I guess the, the yoke, construction. Um, there's like three different sets of um, like increasing. Um, and so by the time, I'll, I'll circle back to that, but by the time I got done with that, I realized like when I put this on, like it was like there and I was supposed to split for sleeves. Like I was supposed to, and it's just like, that's, there's no way. And the reason for that is once again, my row gauge was not where it needed to be. So i only been doing this a year. I guess so far I've been lucky that my row gauge has not been an issue, but these last two projects, um, like as that one was blocking, I had started on this one, so it didn't really occur to me that, it, like it, they, they were kind of one at the same time, kind of in a way. Um, but yes, so you cast on, uh, that's actually what these little indicators are. So I cast on my stitches and then you do, increases um for like front increases for sleeves and then increases for like everything um and so once i finished all those increases i realized that it was not long enough so i just added with no shaping just some rows i think it worked out i like the visual of it is probably a little bit weird um because this is this is where the shaping should have like that's where I should have cast off for the sleeve. And then it's a whole bunch further down going into that. So that being said, um, I also realized after I'd done all this and got started on it, I went back to my original gauge swatch and I realized I had miscounted. So I did not have the right gauge. So now we'll see what happens with blocking, but there's a v-neck and then um right i it'll fit the cardigan fits i don't know if i'm gonna like when i make the button band i don't know if i'm actually gonna add buttonholes or buttons because i don't think 
it's going to be wide enough and you don't want buttons like pulling like you don't want it to look like it's you're <sighs> gonna burst out like the alien is coming right so we'll see how that happens we'll see what happens with blocking because i'll probably i'll finish this i'll do it with this, the sleeves i'll add the and then i'll block that and see what i can get out of it before i do that button band um and we'll we'll see how that goes um but as I was saying, um, much, much earlier, very windy, very rambling, yeah, tangled in this now. Um, I have a random selection of colors. I don't know what colors they were. They didn't come with labels, right? They just kind of came in little balls like this. Um, I'm pretty sure this one is fairy. I think this is a color with fairy. It's a very, very light pink. Um, and I think this one is ecru because I do have ivory. Um, and this is not ivory. I, I bought separately ivory, so I know what color that is. And this is this is not it. So this I think is a crew. Um, but yeah, this green, no idea. I had to guess asparagus. Not sure about the brown that I used. It's just like mm, it's it's some colors. We'll see kind of how it it turns out. I do really like this green and actually this brown together. Like the way it kind of like if I was gonna do like a marling project, like those two colors together look. Kind of like they work super well together like they it's it's a, it's a subtle kind of moral um and then not my personal like favorite but i'm not super into pink but the, the the ivory i think and the fairy like those two colors together like it's very very soft like it looks very nice as well um and i have a bunch a bunch of other colors um because i can go i didn't get them out but i can go grab them and just kind of crinkle my way back And yes, I am in fact sitting on the floor. <laughs> uh, but uh, all the ones in like these these little things, those are the the selection. I kind of put I got again two bags and I just kind of shoved them all in here. And then the ones that are in like the labels and cakes on those, that was some stuff that I had separately gotten. Um, so I do know what those are called. But um, these are colors that I have. So I think from that light pink, um, can I hope the crank looks nice? But I'm gonna fade into this guy, this this darker pink. And then thinking from there into the purple, so like is the color I'm missing. I don't. Know. I'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, well, we're gonna kind of wing it. But these are the colors I have, um, and we'll we'll see. Uh, the sleeves are not gonna match the the marling fading on the the body. It's gonna be different, like intentionally so. Um, the fading, I might have enough to do like just the pinks on the pinks and reds on the bodies, and then maybe like the purples, um, maybe into some blue on the the sleeves, and then I'm not sure what color I'll do for the button band. But um, that is my April cardigan. Um, we will see how it turns out. Um, so I'm gonna put it back in its little project bag. Um, this is a gift from my sister. Um, it is pretty nice, sturdy canvas. It is by the Bay Bag Co, but it has little pouches on the outside. Um, it has pouches and stuff on the inside and a nice little drawstring. Some, some double pointed needles are in there, but um, that is that over there. Um, so, next. Work in progress is also a sock. Um, in terms of also a sock, also a cardigan, also a sock in terms of one of my finished objects. So I am making the Roaring Twenty socks by Nicole Simmons by Nicole Simmons. Um, so here, here is. Let me show you some of the pattern, the cable patterning on it. Um, so, there we go, there's the camera. Boom, boom, boom. Um, like I said, uh, when I was talking about the Okanagan socks, like sometimes when I get to the stockinette, um, it's a little bit harder for me to keep going. Um, 
problem with this is when I ordered yarn, I only got one 50 gram ball of this. This is Schiefenmeyer Regia, um, the, the four ply, uh, uh, in the color candy. Um, I think the number is 05, 05 062. Um, so it has like nice little speckles. It's like, I love this colorway. It's super, super nice. Um, so I have ordered more. It is, it was supposed to be delivered two days ago. I don't know where it is. It's, uh, it's like, mm, if you don't get it by this day, just let us know. We'll get a refund. Um, so I'm hoping that my yarn comes because it was a fucking, it was a pain in the butt to find this because the, the place where I had original was like out of stock. So I had to like search around and like find someone who had this color in stock because this sock is not done yet. This is all the yarn I have left. I can finish this sock. I don't know if it will have a friend if I uh, am not able to get another one of these. Um, but I, up at the top, little pop of color I chose to do. This is Sokun Troga uh, in the colorway Electric Violet. Um, very nice pink. I thought it was kind of nice. It kind of ties in with some of the speckles in here. Um, kind of looks like a cupcake. I don't like I, this, this bit with like this. I was like, it, it, it looks like a cupcake. So I'm, I'm almost debating if I want to do like a dark brown chocolatey color as like a contrast toe, just to kind of complete that cupcake vibe. I mean, that's assuming, because again, I did actually order some chocolate brown sock yarn, also shaped my Regia. Um, so fingers, fingers crossed that order comes because that, that would be great. Uh, but onto the, the pattern itself, um, has twisted rib, detailing at the top, um, and then it goes into, kind of, the camera's over there, right guys? Um, into the uh, cabling. Um, obviously it's not blocked yet, but it's just, doo -doo 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 -doo. and I chose to end the cabling fairly early on in the foot. Um, technically the pattern calls for it to continue down until basically, um, like you need to start doing toe decreases. Like you want to finish the, like do the end chart for the, um, last little bit before you get to the toe decreases and all that. But I, this is also a gift. This is for my youngest sister. Um, which everyone in my family has like, except for me and my future sister-in-law, um, like have giant feet. Like my, my youngest, she's in high school. She's got like a size women's US, like 10 or 11 size foot. So I'm like a big foot. I guess a lot of sock. But, um, anyways, I, I chose to end it fairly early on. So ideally it should kind of just end on like the little, like, right there at the foot, so it'll kind of continue down a little bit, um, but it won't go all the way to the toes because um, I imagine if she's wearing these socks, she's also wearing shoes with them, so there's no point in having that additional raised detailing down the rest of the foot. Um, I feel like it would, if anything, it would just kind of either feel uncomfortable or get worn a lot, um, like rubbing my so I was just like, I'll just finish it early. Um, so I decided to do that. Um, I also, different from the pattern, I did a, I have partridge heel. Um, part of the reason for that is this heel flap is not like an even number of stitches. It's an odd number of stitches. So I thought the lines like on it might like them not being like having some extra like at the end where it wasn't perfectly symmetrical would kind of, well, it would bother me. I didn't check. I didn't do it and see, but I, I had a feeling that I'm like, that might kind of bother me, but I figured with the eye of partridge, it's, um, it wouldn't bother me as much because it'll be less, it'll, it, it'll switch, which I has the double, like, double knit or, like, double pearl kind of thing, so I did that, which I think I like. It's a kind of nice, delicate touch, um, and it was my first time doing a eye of partridge. Super, if you can do a slip stitch heel, you can do a, an eye of partridge. It's just you instead of like whatever you do, like you um, either start with a knit and then into your, after your initial slip stitch, it's either knit, slip, knit, slip, or it's uh, slip. So um, in this case either, uh, so you just kind of alternate which way you go. So the first row, if you do start with your slip stitch and then knit, slip, knit, slip, um, you do your pro roll as normal, 
come around. Um, so for that second round of knitting, it would be slip one, slip one, knit, slip, knit, and so on. So it just kind of adds a nice little different visual detail, which it's subtle. I figured since there's all this stuff going on, like a nice kind of subtle heel would be kind of nice there. Um, so that is the Roaring 20 sock, sock number one. Hopefully my yarn gets here so I can do sock number, well, I can finish sock number one. I, I, I say I might, I'm, I want I want to do the, the chocolate brown contrast um, toe. So I will probably do that and then get started on sock number two. Um, oh yeah, cool. That is kind of like, I have more, um, but that's what I'm gonna call the end of my whips. I do have some stuff that I'm calling, it's, it's, they're, they're hibernating for various reasons where it's like I haven't worked on them in a little while. Um, so one of them, I will, I'll start with this. It's, this is um, the pebble dress. Um, this is, yeah, no, just Pebble by uh, Molly Conrad. Um, and this is basically, uh, like my idea for it was like a swimsuit kind of cover up. Um, so I am knitting this in Sandiscarn Mandarin Petite um, in the colorway, this, that chili. Um, color, no, this is where, 3528. This is color 3528. Um, and so, it is done in panels. Um, so start at the bottom, wait on there, work your way up, and um, you have the option to do three needle bind off, but since this is pure cotton and I've heard like it stretches a lot, I wanted to do something a little bit more sturdy for the um, like top bits. So I chose to bind off and from there, like I would, I have two panels done. I'm like halfway done, but um, I have not worked on panel three. Like I technically cast it on the, the stitches and then like the needles just kind of sit like I haven't done any of this stuff, but um, you could then sew these together. Um, like it, it's, it's not mattress stitch, so that's, that's something else. But um, I, have, I have two panels done, All right? Nice and long, uh, like I said, it has Nice little cute bobbles here down at the bottom. Um, the reason I stopped working on this was because I realized I would not get as much use out of it as I originally thought I would. Because um, technically, where I live, um, I live in um, the Azores, uh, which is part of Portugal. Um, so I live within walking distance of not a beach, um, not where I'm currently at, but like a piscina. Um, so essentially it's just kind of like a natural pool, so to speak. So it's just like I'm in the ocean and then there's like uh, some man-made like semen kind of sharks and stairs that lead down. So it's not a beach. It's close to a beach, but um, I can walk there. The problem is walking there, I kind of have to walk through downtown. I have to walk through the city and it's not quite something I want to be wearing, a bathing suit, and then just this, because there's, there's holes in this, right? So essentially, I'm just kind of walking in, in my bathing suit through downtown to get there. Um, if I were closer, like if I were like only a block or two from the piscina, I might be more willing to do that, but I was like, I don't know if I want to. Um, so I kind of stopped working on this. Um, that being said, like my husband and I were uh, renting, um, and we're looking to move somewhere else within next year or so. And I think the place we're looking at right now um, is much closer to the piscina, like where, in this case, it's not actually a piscina, it's a beach, because um, we're moving towns. Um, and in which case, this might get more use, but also it's now the end of September, and the water here is cold. I've been swimming twice. It is once, I've been swimming once. Water is so cold. Like, if it's not hot out, like, do not put me in that water. Like, I, it, yeah. I, I realized, like, th that when I did that one time I went swimming, I should not, like, I put my little toe in, I was like, ooh, how cold is this? I should have just gone for it because I put my toe in, and I'm like, oh god, this is so cold, I, I can't just go for it now. So I had to, like, slowly, it took me, like, 20 minutes to slowly ease 
my way in. So yeah, not gonna go swimming again this year, unless it gets really, really hot, which I don't see it doing. Um, so this will probably continue hibernating for a while. Um, I do love this color. Like I really wanted to make something orange um, I, as I'm wearing orange. Uh, I don't know that like orange is like my best color per se, but I'm like, I'm going to the beach, like bold, bright, I, it, it would be nice. Um, but yeah, so this you probably won't see again for many months because I don't see myself working on it because it's not an immediate need. Um, which brings me to one of my other hibernating objects. So this one I stopped working on when it started getting hot. So this is a sweater. I swear it's a sweater. Um, trying, there's yarn somewhere in here that's going to drop out. So I want to, is there, am I crazy? Oh, there's not yarn in there. Um, there's just the one ball. Uh, so this is the mosaic sweater um, by not no by Lucien Tricot. Um, so this is my first color work sweater. Um, it I sometimes I do things and I'm just like, why did I make that choice? This was a this was a bold choice because previous to this I had done two color work things one of which was um a hat it was a plaid beanie so it was like chunks of colors and then striping chunk of color kind of thing um and then the other thing i did was a pair of socks with a, like a very like kind of simple motif um so i haven't done a lot of color work but i was like yeah fuck it let's let's just go for a whole sweater parts of this are done flat right you, yeah it has a, it's because it's, it's drop shoulder um, so the front and the back are done in separate pieces. So I had to do not just color work, but also purling side color work, um, which was an experience. Um, actually, it wasn't that bad, um, probably because I wasn't super comfortable with just color work in general. So it was all just like, what am I doing? Um, but yeah, so the reason I stopped working on this is it got hot and just having this on my lap, like I was just sweating profusely. Like there was no way in hell, like I just, I couldn't work on it. It was too, too warm. Um, so I got through, I finished the body and I picked up for the sleeves. Um, so that's, that's this guy. Um, and I was kind of doing them at the same time. Obviously the sleeve is not as, uh, far along so I would kind of get done with the chunk and then switch yarn over and I was like maybe I should just keep going and see get a little further um but yeah this is supposed to go all the way down um and I do like this I realized I think what is it let me hold this like it looks super nice like this this black and dark gray so I'm using four colors technically I almost just used two for this but I had some yarn that I had originally gotten someone requested um like some light warmers and, and colors and so I had gotten yarn for that and then um they never got back to me about sizing stuff and then I moved out of the country so I've only I like I said I live in the Azores Portugal I've been here seven seven months now um so they didn't get back to me before I moved and I'm like well this might like they look like I had bought the yarn so it wasn't like they had already paid me for that but it was just like um this is my yarn now, I'm gonna do what? Something with it. So, voila, and it goes. Um, the, the yarn is Cascade 220 Superwash in fingering. Um, and then the colors are Silver Heather, which uh, is this lighter color. Silver Heather um, Charcoal, which I believe is the lighter of the grays here, charcoal. Um, jet, which is a very, very, very dark, almost black gray, which is here paired with the white. So I did the silver heather and the jet, and then I did the charcoal with the um, black. Yeah, so like, make sure I'm like, is there black? Yeah, black. Um, so the black is called black. Um, so I kind of paired those two together so that there'd be enough kind of contrast. Um, and yeah, I'll probably, it is starting to get a little bit colder here, um, so I'll probably start working on this again, um, 
today it's a little bit toasty, but uh, probably within the next couple of weeks, I imagine I'll, I'll pick this up and uh, finish it because um, it'll be nice to have now that it's, it's, it's colder. Um, but yeah, so this is the mosaic sweater. Um, really, I'm really, I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out so far. Obviously it's not finished, but you know, it, it looks, it looks not so bad. So I, I you know, yay. All right. Oh, there, there was a, see? It's like, I told, I made, I made a swatch. <laughs> that was sort of finished object. I made a swatch. Um, get that out of the way. So the last hibernating object it's gonna be it's it's more it's more of a long-term project uh, i ran into similar issues where it was just too hot to work on um so it is a blanket um yeah haha -ha. so where that wire is looking fun <clears throat> yeah so, blanket. Um, this is my, like, so the pattern I'm using for this, or like the stitch pattern rather, is from a Pearl Soho pattern, um, specifically the reversible stripes scarf. So this is not supposed to be a blanket. I think the original was supposed to be like DK weight yarn. This is bulky, big ass yarn. Um, so keyword reversible, so you have, side one, and you have side two. So it kind of has different different looks on each side. Um, the yarn I'm using for this uh, original Stardust project because my um, future sister in law and my brother, they got me um, some yarn for Christmas, and I'm like, what, what do I do with this? Um, so they got me the Premier Puzzle uh, yarn. This is the color Backgammon. Yes, this is backgammon, and then they also got me, so I got two skeins, which these are not the two skeins I originally got because those are in here, um, but this one, backgammon, this one is hangman, um, they all have game names, um, so I figured, I'm like, what can I do with that? I'll make a blanket, um, and so I found, I found that, that pattern, it had two colors, and I thought since this is kind of like a variegated um, color changing yarn, um, it would be kind of interesting to see how it kind of worked up together. So it has lots of different kind of sections and all that because the yarn changes, both yarns change color. Um, so like I said, this is more of a long-term project. I have no end deadline on this. Um, I have, this is like I said, one, uh, or rather one of each color. I have already started the next two balls of color and then I have, another two balls of color as well, which is in another by the Bayco big project bag. Um, and it's covered in cat hair because if you have cats, you have cat hair everywhere. Um, so yeah, it's just lots of cat hair. Uh, yeah, so I'd say like, mm, my, my favorite, I like this, this side is my favorite. I like, I like how this looks, but it is um, a free pattern. Um, it is, color work it's it's mosaic color work so you're really i wouldn't even say it's like mosaic color work because it's not like i'm slipping well i am slipping stitches so i have to take it back but um it's flat but like the way they're done it's like really nice so I, you only have to work with one color um on each on each row um so on one side you're knitting and then you slip the next stitch but you put the you pearl with uh you slip the, with yarn in front then you knit and so you do that boom 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 you slide it back you do the other color boom right so um boom boom right so i would do i think technically this is my first color though the backgammon and then i do hangman i knit across and then you go pearl and then you would slip um the same with yarn in back um so you pearl then you'd slip the next yarn uh, with yarn in back, purl, da 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 come in there, do the other side. So you're kind of like knitting and purling um, back and forth, but you're doing each color. So it's like knit, knit, um, knit, knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl. Um, and that kind of creates this look. Um, 
like I said, obviously this was supposed to be a scarf pattern. I just decided to go for it when I was casting on stitches. I kind of was like, all right, this looks big enough. Um, and so it's it's quite quite wide. I don't know that you can fully appreciate it. Yeah, I say it. Yeah. It's I say it's quite wide. It's supposed to be a lap blanket. It's not like a king size blanket. Um, but it's it's definitely broader than a scarf. So that is my long term blanket project. Like I said, if, if it was too hot for that sweater, it was definitely too hot <laughs> to have a full blanket on my lap and knit on that. Um, so again, I'll probably pick that up at some point. It's a good mindless knit. It's not. Doesn't, doesn't require too much thinking on that, but it's still got enough interest going on where it's just like, you know, it's, 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 it's a fun knit. Um, so that is it for kind of works in progress, hibernating objects. Um, last thing I kind of want to show you, I have some acquisitions, not yarn per se, <laughs> but I, I, got, I got a book. Um, so I got Respect the Spindle. Um, figured this was a nice compromise. At some point, I want to start spinning, but figured I'll wait a little bit longer on that. Um, I think at this point, because it's like end of September, my plan is to kind of wait until end of November and see if there are any like Black Friday deals or anything like that. If not, you know, hey, that's fine. I can pay regular price. But since we are getting close to that time, I'm like, I can, I can wait. I can, I can see. If I can save a little money, great. If not, all right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, so I got got this. It's super interesting. It tells you how to make your own drop spindle in there. Um, not like a super fancy one, but you know. So, Respect the Spindle by Abby Frankmont. Um, I think everyone who spins kind of says this is a good book for that and seems like it. Um, last thing, not really knitting related per se, but I did recently get some art. Um, it's in a little shiny thingy, so I'll, I'll take it out. Um, so this is by Sibylline. I, I don't know, it's like, it's, 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 she's on uh, Instagram. Um, like recently she had a shop update and I was like, yes, please. I would like, like some art. Um, this is technically not something I ordered. This is just like a nice little like yes, thank you um, kind of card. But like, look at the little cute, the cute kitty. It, it, and it's 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 got like it's a little clown kitty. Um, so I was like, I'll probably when I get around to framing stuff. I'll, like I said, like my husband's planning moving, so I might not really do any of that until then. But like this is now, it's gonna go on the wall somewhere. Um, I also got this right. I'm gonna... Look at look at how cute things are. Like I got this and like I was showing showing my husband that and he's like, so did you just get lots of art with cats? And I'm like, yes, yes I did. As a matter of fact, I did get some art with cats exclusively. Um, but this one's got some nice little shooting stars and it's just like super nice colors, like super cute. Um, I actually have a tattoo. On my on my hip, and it has some like little shooting star thingies on it. So I was like, "That's nice. I like cats." And then this is this is just it's such a such a vibe. Like got a cute little rug, black kitty. I could that I can make a checkered sweater vest like this. It's just like no oh, nice. I, I I you know why not? Um, yeah. So that's that's my art. I figured I just. I share it, cause it makes me it makes me happy. Um, yeah. Uh, on this on this note, um, part of the, the noodles and knits is um, I am outside of knitting and stuff. It's like I am a flexibility instructor, um, and I train contortion. Um, so I am a little bit of a noodly human being. Um, and I just, you know, I got started. It's like, circus is cool. Circus is great. Who doesn't love a little clown cat? Um, which, speaking of which, in terms of like Cirque du Soleil, one of the, like, the top paid, like highest paid um, of the performing artists are actually their um, clowns. Because if you don't, clowning is actually, it's really, it's hard. Like, it takes a lot of physicality. Like, it, it takes a lot of, like, it's really hard to be 
good at clowning. Um, it's like you might think, no, these guys are that guys, cause it's, but clowns, they, they, they're, they're, they're the money makers. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining me and letting me talk at you and just be all over the place. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, like I'll be able to like edit and add in like pictures of like patterns or like text and all that. Um, we'll see. Um, I filmed stuff on here with uh, before, and the editing pro uh, program that comes with my computer, like it didn't work. Like it would refuse to export any sort of video. So I'm hoping. I since downloaded Windows Movie Maker, so <laughs> hopefully that will allow me to be a little bit more successful in my editing attempts. Um, if not, enjoy <laughs> what it is. Um, I'm gonna try and record probably like once a month. Um, I'm not a super fast knitter, um, but you know, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll share what I, what I get done and all that. Um, I'm hoping, I think I should have my April cardigan done within the next month, or at least be to the point where I'm, I'm gonna need to work on the button band. Um, yeah, uh, thanks you guys. If you liked it, um, feel free to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, all that jazz, uh, and enjoy the rest of it. It's fall now, right? Yeah, it's fall. September 21st was the last day of summer, first day. It, it's fall, I know that for sure. Um, which I, there we go. It's fall. Knitting season is in, in full swing. Um, but thanks you guys. Bye.